Hey everyone, I am Steve from GamersNexus.net and today we're talking about AMD's new 300 series, the R9 380 and R9 390 specifically are the cards we got for review. And we got the Sapphire versions of the cards, they are called Nitro, so this is Sapphire's new gaming line of R9 300 series, R7 300 series cards. The review is already on the website, so if you saw that, great. The article and benchmarks and thermal benchmarks and power benchmarks are all there, and we're going to recap them here for the YouTube audience. So the R9 390 and R9 380 are the same as the R9 290 and 280 with a few very small, but according to AMD, very noteworthy differences, and those would include a 50 megahertz clock rate boost, so you're boosting the core clock by about 50 megahertz, and that also includes some power control and a couple of other changes. So just to recap where we are in terms of specifications, the lineup, what's a refresh, what's not, here's a chart of the specs of the new cards. We didn't get an R9 390X, R7 360, or R7 370, but I did get the R9 390 and R9 380. And if you look at the specs here, you'll see that they have the same stream processor count, that's effectively the core count. The clock rates boosted about 50 megahertz to 1000 megahertz for the R9 390, and boosted into the 970 range for the R9 380, another 40 to 50 megahertz boost. And you'll see that the pixel rates and texel rate are bolstered as well. And that, that's because these are calculated dependent upon the core clock. So for the texel rate, for instance, your giggle texels per second rating, that is calculated as a function of the core clock multiplied by the TMUs. So you multiply your texture map units by the core clock and that gives you your texels per second output which is shown here as slightly higher than the previous series. In terms of price strategy, AMD is still trying to come in a bit cheaper than their competitor, and the R9 380 is about a $200 card, that's the MSRP. For reference, the R9 280, the previous model, which was superseded by the 285, the R9 280 is about 170, 150, depending on rebates right now, and the 285 is about $200, the 280X is a little bit more than that. The R9 390, the new card, is a $330 card MSRP. That's about $100 more than a post-rebate R9 290. Do note the post-rebate there. You get about $250, $270 before rebates, so still cheaper than the new R9 390. But that's to be expected with a new device. You expect some performance gain, so uh, you would also expect to pay more money for it. And the R7... 360 and R7 370, which I don't have, will be priced at 110 and 150 respectively. Those would be replacing the 260 and 270. And in terms of what the 300 series is meant to do, AMD bragged in a call to the press that the R9 300 series is meant for gamers, specifically those who want to play at 1440 and 4K resolution. So it's targeting that higher resolution market, which is something Nvidia has begun doing also. The company further emphasized the importance of their 50 megahertz boost to the clock and noted that they spent the last years or months at least working on power efficiency changes and clock rate changes so this 50 megahertz performance boost in theory is a little bit more than just overclocking 50 megahertz but we'll test that in the performance benchmarks momentarily now normally in a video this is where i update everyone on the new gpu architecture but in the case of the 300 series we're still on the islands gpu architecture so it's sort of just refreshes, rebadges as they're called with some slight changes that are improvements over the previous iterations. So just to recap everyone, bring everyone up to speed on what's been going on the last few years, the HD7970, if you remember that card, was based on Tahiti. It was a very powerful card for its time. The Tahiti card was rebadged as an R9-280. They are effectively identical, not perfectly identical, but pretty close. And then the R9-285 was a refresh of the 280. It's similar to the 280, but it uses an offshoot of the architecture called Tonga. Tonga has some feature changes from the 280 and the 7970. It introduces about three years of extra features from AMD, so it's not a huge architectural overhaul by any means, but uh, VCE and some other things like that have been changed into the 285. The 285 also brought with it things like VSR, which has not yet been introduced to the 200 series. It was supposed to be, but hasn't been yet. So 285 has VSR and the 280 does not. That's where we stand with those. 
the 300 series, still islands, still the same as the 200 in terms of architecture, but introduces, again, a few small changes. So along with some other things, there's a new frame rate tuning protocol in the software and the catalyst drivers. You can say, I want to cap my frame rate at 80 FPS. If it ever is going to exceed 80 FPS, then cap it. And that allows basically the GPU to throttle and limit its power consumption. This isn't something practically that will get a lot of use, unfortunately, because the times when it will exceed the limiter frame rate for most people, you probably want to cap it at like 120 if you're on a faster monitor. It, the times it exceeds that are going to be in cutscenes or things like that. They will be very limited, and the power consumption saved is, is basically non-consequential compared to just a GPU architecture overhaul. The Sapphire cards we looked at are part of the new Nitro line made by Sapphire, and this Nitro branding initiative is Sapphire's approach to making the 300 series cards an emphatic statement for where they believe AMD currently rests in the market. So Sapphire and AMD both take a similar narrative. Their narrative is that the 300 cards are for gamers who don't care about extra features, they don't care about things like maybe CUDA acceleration in Photoshop, where you would benefit from CUDA cores, and they don't. the buyers of these cards would not necessarily care about the lower TDP. They're okay with a 275 watt card and something that runs a little bit hotter. So that's sort of, the narrative is that AMD thinks their devices are perfectly fine for the raw frame rate output that they provide for the price they are listed at. And that's not necessarily right or wrong, but that's that's how it's presented to us as journalists, so I wanted to convey that to you all uh, through AMD rather than editorializing it. And that's where the, the market positioning is. Performance is really what matters most at the top level, and then we drill down into wattage and, and heat. And unfortunately, the performance of the 300 series cards is very disappointing. We'll get to drivers momentarily, and a completely different issue. But the performance gain is about 3 to 6%. If you already have a 200 series card, you can see in these charts, there's really not much reason to upgrade, especially for the price premium, because obviously you've got to pay whatever you paid originally at a minimum, and then the extra cost for the new series. So if you have a 280, there's no reason to buy a 380. If you have a 290, there's no reason to buy a 390, and so forth. An R9 290 is 90, 80, 70 at a minimum cheaper than the R9 390 right now. That might change as supply and demand changes. But it's cheaper, and it performs pretty much the same as the 390. So if you must buy one of these cards, if you have to buy an AMD device, and you're looking at this price range, I would say go buy the 290 or 280 or 200 series equivalent to the 300 device you're looking at, because the price is just substantially better, the performance is similar, and it might even put you into another price class up if you can... Uh, bump down to the 200 series. And as sort of disappointing as the performance is for the 300 series, the drivers are much more disappointing. We actually could not use the newest drivers. AMD has a new driver set called 15.15. .15. We could only use these for the 300 series cards. They did not work with the 200 series cards. That should be noted. We couldn't install them. They just didn't work at all. And we had driver installation issues with 300, so I had to completely wipe all the existing drivers. I had to uh, sort of nuke the driver install base and then make sure I installed only the 15.15 .15 or only the 15.5, whatever the previous beta is for the 200 series. So they just don't cleanly overwrite, which is okay because we can work around that. What's not okay is the flickering that I discovered on the R9 390 primarily. I think I saw it on 380 as well, but definitely on the 390 we saw a lot of black flickering. And this happened on two types of monitors. I have on monitors with G-Sync and monitors without G-Sync. So basically all monitors. And the flickering was basically just two times per minute at a minimum for a minimum of five seconds each time. So 10 seconds per minute in our testing, we would see flickering and it would be several seconds at a time. The screen would turn black, it'd come back, turn black, come back. And sometimes that was associated with a frame rate drop. Sometimes it was not. And when it was not, that's where you can't just rely on the raw FPS numbers in the charts because the FPS looks fine, but in reality it is actually unplayable on the 390 in most games that we tested and on the desktop because of this black flickering that totally interrupts your game experience. And this is an extension of a problem AMD's had lately where their drivers just are really sorely lacking. And 
if AMD were to spend a year or two years working on anything right now, I would much rather they fix their drivers than refresh cards. I know it doesn't really work that way. You have software teams and hardware teams. But in terms of division of resources, the drivers sorely need updating. The last major release was in December. That was the last stable launch. That was the last Wickle certified launch. And then we've had beta drivers, thankfully, for GTA 5 came out almost immediately, basically immediately, day one or day zero. And the Witcher 3 had drivers come out shortly after the Witcher launched. It was following a, a sort of quote-unquote controversy about GameWorks and AMD had drivers that needed to be updated so it's been quite a while and that's the major focal point for AMD at this point going forward is driver fixes so that they work more consistently on multiple hardware configurations without this flickering and things like that going on because no matter how well these cards perform if the drivers aren't working with them if they're not cooperating it really doesn't matter what the frame rate is because you just can't play when your screen's turning black that stated the 290 the 290x the 280 and the 285 that we tested are all perfectly fine. We did not see this flickering issue with the 290X, with the 280, the 280X, and they play fine. The frame rate's slightly lower, a couple percent, but it's very easy to overclock those cards by 50 megahertz and get a similar performance gain. Not exactly the same, because you have some thermal gains as well, but pretty close, effectively identical. What you're looking at now is a thermal chart. Sapphire's thermals are very impressive. As much as AMD's frame rate performance is somewhat disappointing for gains over the 200 series, the thermal performance of Sapphire's coolers is good. They've done a good job with these coolers. Sapphire's coolers keep the known hot AMD chips at around 45 Celsius Delta T over ambient, beaten only by the Strix 960, which is a much cooler GPU, consumes fewer watts, so of course it's going to be cooler, and the liquid-cooled hybrid, which is liquid-cooled. And by the way, we reviewed that. The article is on the website, and the video will be up shortly. Now for the power chart, the max system power load. This is peak system load of the R9 390 and R9 380. Places the cards in the 260 and 340-ish watt range for system power consumption. This is total power consumption when the GPU is under 100% load from looping Firestrike benchmarks. In terms of the verdict, unfortunately, I just can't recommend the 300 series right now because the 200 series is so close in performance, it's cheaper currently, at least, and it doesn't have the driver issues that we saw in the 300 series. I'm sure those will be resolved eventually, but until that point, I can't recommend them and feel confident in that recommendation. The 390 and 380, if they come down in price, if they're similar to the 200 series in price, sure, they're fine buys. Uh, there's certainly an argument to be made for raw performance output, certainly an argument to be made against the lower TDP of the NVIDIA cards and favoring the frame rate output of AMD. That's really up to you to decide. You need to look at your system build list and say, you know, am I looking for a low thermal system? Am I building in a small form factor box? Do I need to keep the thermals down? Things like that. If you don't care about those things, then the AMD series is okay to look at, but then your next concern is drivers. So until the drivers are resolved in a fashion that is more compatible installation-wise, more compatible flickering-wise, uh, it's not a recommendation I can push, but the cards are still a consideration in the future as AMD iterates its drivers. And of course, the Fury cards will be coming out shortly. I think we're having a little bit trouble securing those, but I'm working on it. If I have to, I'll buy one myself and we'll get a Fury review online. Hopefully that new Fiji architecture will be the overhaul that AMD needs to get back into the game firmly and do some head-to-head -head battling with Nvidia at the top range. These battle at the mid-range and the low end, but they don't have anything really fighting the 980 Ti right now, and that is a pretty serious price point to, to get involved with because then you get a halo effect. So that is AMD as it stands now, the 300 series. Check the link in the description below for the full article. And our Patreon page, by the way, is up and running. We've got a link to that following the end of this video. Please check that out. If you like this type of content, you want to support us and help our objective approach to coverage with more depth. That is all for this time. I will see you all next time.